Okay, let's get to my message. I'd like to uh, sh- just take a few minutes, and um, we, can, we can start with understanding the times. Before I get to code breakers, it's very exciting uh, what we have to share to, to you today. Um, as I said, there were, I get glimpses of stuff. I see it in a dark place. That's how my gift works. I see images and pictures while well, hear something. For instance, when I heard the name Paul, somebody wrote in and said, well, why? it still happened. What was the big deal? Well, we'll expound on that a little bit today. It did happen, but not quite as like it was supposed to happen. And that is because a prophet was prophesying and people were praying. That's how God works. He reveals what he's about to do through true prophets. It's very easy to, to speak doom and gloom all the time. It's very easy to do that. Uh, because we are surrounded by it all the time. Let me say this to you in, in just addressing for a few minutes before we, 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 we come forward and we build an altar. Now, you may be watching and saying, well, I don't need to. I'll just go to an altar at a church. No, you build an altar like Elijah did and then placed his offering on it. Each one of you today at the right time in a few minutes, I want you to literally build an altar. No, not physically. But in your spirit, we're going to build an altar and place our offering on it. And you watch what God will do. I'll prove it to you over and over again. How he multiplies when you give. This is not about giving. I'm not going to sell anything. You came here free of charge. This costs us money. But you're going to feel the compulsion in your heart to give at a certain time. Do it because you will see the heavens open up for you when that happens. Now, my question is, what lies ahead? Trouble? Well, of course, there's always going to be trouble. But it's amazing to me how easily people see and express fear, doom, darkness, and judgment. Obviously, they're moved by what they see in the now and in the present and are oblivious of what is ahead. Now, you may be saying, but how can we possibly see what is ahead? God put eternity in your DNA. That's what it says in the Bible. So in your blood, in your DNA is eternity. What is eternity? Eternity is Past, present, and future, all in one. So we all know the past. We all know the present, or somewhat. But very few are capable of seeing a little bit of the future. And so we need to understand that we have that gift. I've said this so many times. When Jesus came to the earth, there was great wickedness. And when he departed from the earth, there was great wickedness. So what changed? What changed? He deposited light in a dark place. He deposited light into the Jewish people. He deposited light in the temple, in the poor. He deposited light in Rome, even up to to, to Caesar. And that light continued through the apostles, even with the great apostle Paul standing before Caesar. In other words, we have the duty to release light in a dark place. Well, how can we do that? What did Jesus do when he walked on the earth? Did he speak about the darkness? Did he constantly bicker about the darkness? No, he told stories and parables. He healed those who were sick. He taught those who were hungry. He cleansed those who were unclean. He loved those who were sinners. And he loved those who were longing for God's touch. And he even corrected people, and sometimes sharply, Because they were over-religious, which is a problem we have today on the earth as well. It'll never stop. That'll be an age-old enemy of yours creeping in your prayer time, creeping up to you, trying to make you guilty, feeling that you're not good enough. Well, I've got good news for you, and that's what the gospel is. It's good news that inside of you is a magnificent destiny that God put there that you only have to discover. You can run to and fro across the face of the earth to find it, but it's inside of you. And that prophetic word, the light, brings that destiny out. And most of the time, Jesus' correction was to religious leaders of that hour. It's the same today. You know how easy it was for the 12 spies to see massive giants and how difficult it was to see the fruit of the land. So when God sent them in, they were to see the benefit of Israel. But instead, 10 of the spies saw the giants, which is what's happening today. 80% of the people are seeing the giants. Thank God for the 20% of people that come back with a good report. 
Thank God for those that see the fruit of the land. Thank God for those that have seen something bright in our future because it is. Otherwise, we have to say that God is of no use to us. He's no good, he has no power, and evil will reign. It doesn't. Twelve spies were sent to see. Everybody say see. see. Not look. Now there's a big difference, which is what I'm teaching on a Wednesday night. Twelve spies were sent to see what the land looked like so the Israelites could inherit it. So whatever report they brought back would give the Israelites access into their inheritance or they would have to go another 40 years. Until those ten were rid of, and then two spies, Joshua and Caleb, could take their mountain. They had to wait for so long. We're not going to wait. This is not time for waiting, wasting our time. Ten of them looked, and two of them saw. What did they see? They saw the fruit of the land and the future of Israel. And you know what they did? They brought the fruit to the people and said, here is your future. And that's what prophetic is all about, is bringing from the future... A little bit of what is there. You can bring giants. We know that there are giants out there. But you can bring fruit. You can bring grapes and wine and pomegranates or whatever. Back and say to the people, this is what is ahead of us. God gave us this earth to inherit. He gave us the nations as our inheritance. His inheritance is ours. So the rest of them saw the giants and and fear overtook their faith. That's what's happening in America. Fear is overtaking faith. The news media are doing it all the time. Even Christian news media are constantly harping on and have been doing it for 30, 40, 50 years, telling us it's never going to happen. I have had people, great men of God, get angry with me in 1998, 99, when I told them that we will live beyond the year 2000. Y2K would not affect us. Many of them ran off into the mountains hiding away. Is this the position of the church? Did you ever see Jesus hiding away and running away from the masses? No, he disappeared from the midst of them. God gave him supernatural strength and protection, as he will do for America and as he will do for you in this time of of great need. What you see will give you access to the kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Now, many of you watching are saying, well, the kingdom is heaven, isn't it? The kingdom of God is on this earth. Jesus said to people, the kingdom is near you. For what purpose? For you to enter it. Do you remember the words that he said to Nicodemus, who was searching for the kingdom of God? Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what he said. In other words, he was saying the biggest thing is that you see the kingdom in your match. When Daniel was in captivity, three times a day he set his face towards Jerusalem while he was in Babylon and prayed with his eyes on Jerusalem. That's how he survived. That's how I pray. I pray not with my eyes on the problem, but I pray with my eyes on the kingdom. Because I can see what the kingdom has. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Is that still available today? Is that still going to be a part of our future? If not, then the kingdom is in non-existence in our future. And it is in existence. Got to give young people hope. So basically, Jesus was saying, rebirth gives us spiritual enlightenment. Or spiritually enlightened eyes to see what? The kingdom of God on earth and in our generation. You may be saying, well, what is this kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rulership and the reign and the dominion of the Lord God mighty, Almighty. So why are so few seeing the kingdom of God in our midst? Why are so many seeing the control of Rome, the control of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and so few seeing the kingdom of God? Now, there are prophets on the, ar- on the arise. There are prophets that are coming out from all over, young people, and we've got to offer them a future. And the thing that we have to offer them is light. Do you remember when Elisha had a word from God that he gave to the king of Israel? Now, I've done that with a few presidents before and, and, and people in high positions where God will tell me something about the future. When Katrina was about to take place, A month before, I believe it was, I had a clear prophetic word in Houston, Texas, where I was close by and spoke about the hurricane that would come, spoke about this terrible thing that would happen. And in New Orleans, I said there would be bodies coming out above and and, and floating on the water. You may be saying, well, that's a bad word. But I was sharing, I shared that with the President of the United States personally. 
President George W. Bush. I wrote it. I have proof of it and shared that this was coming. I didn't say Katrina, but I spoke about this, this hurricane that would come and the destruction that it would, do, that would, it would, it would bring. The reason that God shares these things is so we can pray against it. People ignored it. Nobody listened. When Elisha was, and Elisha was a prophet in the Old Testament, he had a double portion of what Elijah had, which is where we're going to go to now before we move into code breakers. He had a double portion. Elisha went to the king of Israel and said, your enemies are about to attack you and they are in such and such a place and showed him geographically where they were. My question is, where is that same spirit of Elisha today that we can point out where the enemy is and how he's going to attack? And I want you, I'm going to ask you a question, a, a, a favor, everybody. Will you please pray for me? Because I, I've been getting access to many of these words about attacks, where they're going to happen. And the enemy hates my soul, hates the gift, will constantly attack and try and kill and destroy me. But I will not stop prophesying. I will not stop searching God so that our country may be preserved and our people may be safe. Now that's the duty of a prophet. He is a watchman of the wall. Oh, watchman, what of the night? What is happening in the night? Because you are the one that sees in the night. And so Elisha went to the king of Israel and told him where they were. And the Syrian army heard about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they decided to surround Elisha and attack him. Kill him. One person. One gift. An entire army tried to destroy. I say today that God is not going to give psychics the word. God is not going to allow psychics to tell the police where a kidnapped child is. That's what the prophets of God are for. And that's why he placed us in America. Not to constantly speak about the night that is coming and the bad that is coming and the judgment that is coming. But to find some truth and light so he can help these children that are in sex slavery and being sold. Come on. This is what we call to do. That's the bigger picture. We need a flash of light. We need an illumination. And so Elisha stood and watched the Syrian army around him. And he had a servant. His name was Gehazi. And, he, and, he, and his servant was frightened. He saw tens of thousands of men surrounding Elisha, the gift, the prophet, the future. Hold on now. And you may say, well, we, he was surrounded by darkness. He was surrounded by death. He was surrounded by immediate death. There was no way that one man could fight an entire Syrian army. And the servant knew it. He said, Master, we are, Master, we are outnumbered. And what does Elijah, Elisha do? Does he join the crowds? Oh my God, we are surrounded by enemies. We have bad reports. It's because we've sinned. Elijah st stands up and says, oh, Lord, open his eyes. And he says to him, those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. I say to you today that by the Spirit that there are those that are with us are far greater than the reports that you have heard. There are angelic hosts that God has sent for this nation and many nations and for His people. And I say to you again, those who are with us are greater than those are the, that are against us. You can do it. Two, three, four. Those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. Those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. Do it now. Those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. Those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. Now say, angels are watching over me. Angels are watching over you. Every single day. I can hear you all over the world shouting. Saying, Kim, you know what? You're making a little bit of sense here. And the, and the, and the servant of Elisha, I'm coming to an end. 
the servant of Elisha, said, what are you talking about? That's sort of paraphrased. And, I, and Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. You know what the problem is today? Our eyes are blinded by prognosis, prognosticators that have predicted today that you're supposed to be dead. That predicted long ago that today we would go down and we would go under. That America would be burnt up. That California will fall into the sea. And I'm not even going to Europe. I'm just sticking out in America. And we're still here. Why do you trust them? Well, Kim, it's going to happen sometime. I know that. But is this that time? Is this that time? Because you may have horribly missed the time and be poverty stricken without anything because your eyes are blinded. Open his eyes, Lord. And suddenly the servant of Elisha saw multitudes of angels surrounding Elisha. You may not believe in the spirit world, but now, at this very moment, and I sense it from the time that I started, that there were angels of God present in your homes, in your lives. And I'm telling you now, your eyes are being opened. Now, you may not see them physically, but you will sense them. Stop everything, no matter who you are. Hold up your hands, just like this. Do it. Every person, please do it for me. It's a very gentle, beautiful, sweet spirit that is here. Angels are present because of God's beckoning. They are not present because we prayed for them to be present. Now I'm going to pray for the word to come to you. I'm going to stand. <laughs> Hold your hands up like this, please. Hold that B minor. Hold that B minor for a minute and just excel it. Ed, put it out there. Hold that B. Father, I'm praying now that you would open everyone's eyes. I pray that you would open every eye spiritually that suddenly for one moment they would catch a glimpse of that which is taking place now. You can sense that many of you watching, you before it's a theophany it's a visitation from God and he told me today there will be the presence of angelic hosts in every home that accepts the truth and the prayer that I pray as a prophet over you because in the next few minutes you're going to hear fascinating things about what God has spoken for our future there's a presence of God close your eyes hold up your hands now, Lord, I pray that you would enter into each home. Now, I pray that you would enter into each heart, every child, every person present. And Lord, let the atmosphere suddenly be filled with light. There we go. There we go. That's happening. Now,
do that with me. Sing that note. The Spirit of God is in your house, it's in your body, it's in your, in your home, it's in your living room, wherever you are now, this very second, it's happening. It's an angelic tongue. 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 The Middle East, all over the world, even in islands that are watching, South America, Central America. I'm just mentioning a few. It's happening now. There, are, there is an angel that God has assigned to these nations and to this nation. I've said it before, but now you can sense it. It's in your home. God has sent you his life. Do me a favor. Take a deep breath. Everybody, you, you're having a spiritual experience. Don't fight it. Don't let this head of yours constantly be working out, is this right, is this wrong? Let your spirit tell you. It's in the Bible. It's all scriptural. Do me a favor. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. And breathe out. Three times you're going to do this. Let's do it again. One more time. Here we go. It's happening. Here it is. It's in your home. Father, I pray now. Open their eyes. That they may see that those who are with us are greater those who are against us. God who is with us through his angelic hosts is greater than those who are against us. Now Lord, every person that is now being touched by your spirit has built an altar, Lord, to offer an offering of great love to you. Because Gideon, when the angel came to him, please listen, don't ignore this. When the angel came to Gideon of old and said, I am bringing deliverance to your land and to your people, Gideon said, wait here. And he went and brought an offering and placed it on a rock. And the angel waited for him and God received the offering and gave Gideon the greatest victory, one of the greatest written in the Bible, destroying tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of an army, armies with 300 men. Now, Lord, as they are standing before you, receiving your protection, your peace, your provision, your love and your mercy upon this altar, the spiritual altar that we have built in the presence of the angel. saying I'm in a bad place it doesn't matter you can give three five dollars you can give ten many of you can give way more than that but you're gonna ask him what do you want from me and you're gonna feel something well you may have already made up your mind it take, it'll take you two minutes 
This is not about money. This is about giving an offering in the presence of an angel. David did it, and the plague in Israel stopped. It's the same spirit that is here. Now pray this prayer with me. Lord, I sense your presence. Whatever the angel has brought, I receive. My eyes are opened. Now I can see. Show me tomorrow. I am going to give you an offering on this altar in the presence of the angel of God. Show me what to give. Now pray. Thank you. Now, there are tens of thousands of you that are watching. Some of you are faithful. Many of you have not given ever. God wants you to be a part of a great community of people that are in unity together and give your offering. And I pray that this week would be one of your greatest weeks. You can have that. Now go ahead and do what you felt. Every person that received, felt, sensed, and wants to get a hold of their future and their destiny.